Today I want to talk to you about God's divine destiny, but I want to entitle this A Grateful Heart. Kind of bounce off of, but we've been talking about the heart. But uh, I'm not going to go into that type of teaching, but I just want to talk about a grateful heart. I stand here today broken. I mean, I'm celebrating, don't get me wrong, but I'm just broken, like, because God's faithfulness. This is not the faithfulness of man. Yes, you've been faithful. Thank you for your giving. Thank you for your laboring. But this is the faithfulness of God. Do you understand? This is the faithfulness of God. We started in a little hotel room. There's some people that were there. Pastor Saul installed me 23 years ago, going to be 24 coming up, and there was 139 people there. And we dropped down after that a little bit less, but we've seen the growth of this church because to God be the glory. To God be the glory. Somebody say amen, to God be the glory. We as God's children must value worship. Worship sets an atmosphere where God has honored That's why we sing a lot of songs today. It was intentional. You're saying like, oh my God, how many songs are they going to sing? Well, don't worry, we got a couple more coming too. (laughs) No, but it sets an atmosphere where God is honored. And see, this used to be a supermarket, but now it's the house of God. This ain't a supermarket no more. This is the house of God. We've turned it in to the house of God, where his presence will dwell, where people will get saved and lives will be changed. Just like every place we've moved, there's a wall back there that shows the six times that we've moved and each time how God was with us and God has blessed us. And now we are in in this move here and we're going to see all the great things that God's going to do. Worship is so important in our individual lives and as a church. It sets an atmosphere where God is honored, where God is praised. It's where we express love and respect and gratitude, thankfulness, appreciation and reverence. We worship him because he's been so good to us, but not only with our worship, but I want to say this to anyone that's here today, and maybe you're not where you should be with God. Maybe you're, because when you get a big crowds like this with this many people, there's always some that maybe they're not where they should be with God, or they got secret sin in their life, or they're compromising, or, you know, you have the on fire core, then you have the ones that are semi on fire, then you have this, those that are lukewarm, and then you have those that, They need to get that flame lit up again. So we worship God in many ways, but we also got to do it with our lives and our thoughts. Romans 12, once in 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 the GNT translation says this. So then my friends, because of God's great mercy to us, offer yourselves as a living sacrifice to God, dedicated to his service, and pleasing to him. This is the true worship that you should offer God. Isn't that true? It's our lives. We're living sacrifice. So important. You know, you could see, sense the gratitude. Last night we were here. We went straight from uh, the Run for Hope. We were helping host the Run for Hope, and we were there all day, and Saturday we were there rehearsing, and no, Friday, and uh, we came straight over here, and there was an army of people setting up everything. And I want to thank all those that have labored. I want to thank Tiny. I know he doesn't like that, but Tiny with the sound. Doesn't it sound good? Hey! All right, there you go. I want to thank him and all those that have labored, uh, Carlo, everyone, the worship, so many people. Thank you. You made this possible. Now listen to this. God has been faithful even when you and I haven't been faithful. How many can say amen? How many have experienced that? That God is faithful even when you're not faithful or as faithful as we should be. The Bible says, I'm going to just lay a foundation, then I'm going to take you to Luke chapter 17, and that'll be our scripture. In Deuteronomy 7, 9, the Bible says, Know therefore that the Lord your God is God, Elohim, almighty, all-powerful, creator of all things. He is the faithful God. He is the faithful God. He's keeping his covenant of love to a thousand generations, to those that love him and keep his commands. So we serve a God who's loving and who's faithful. He really is. Psalms 146, 5 and 6. 
The Bible says, blessed is he whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord his God. And then verse 6 says, the maker, he is the maker of heaven and earth, the sea and everything in it. The Lord will always be faithful. Somebody say, God's faithful. Somebody thank God for his faithfulness. That's why we're here. We're here because of God's faithfulness. We're here because of God's faithfulness and God foreseen everything he wanted to do. Everything. God already foreseen it. He knew it. All the ways of the Lord are loving and faithful. God is a faithful God. Somebody say amen. amen. God is a faithful, faithful, faithful God. Now, I want to read our, our scripture. And I just want to say this. This is temporary because I feel like jumping down right now. But because of the front row, the guy's age, I don't want to jump down because then they might do it too and get, the, and get hurt. Joking. March the 7th, 2004. It was a Sunday morning. How many of you were there? March the 7th, 2004. Stand to your feet right now if you were there. I want you to see how the church has grown. March the 7th, 2004, when Dick Mills came. Dick Mills is the, is the prophet that gave Pastor Sonny and Sister Julie Isaiah 45, 2 and 3, and Isaiah 54. Look at just a handful of people, but you were there. Okay, you can could, you could be seated. What's profound is this. We got a scripture that is so profound because we're living it today here at this, in this building. It said, David, David also said to his son Solomon, be strong and courageous and do the work. See, he was getting ready to build the temple. And David also knew that his time on earth was short. Because in the, in, in, in the earlier part of the chapter, he talks to his son Solomon about this is the most important thing in life. He talks about honoring God. He talks about keeping his commandments. He talks about be, be a kind of a leader, be a kind of king that is honors God. Walk with God. Remember God. Never forget his covenant. Never forget that it's God that does things. God's faithful. He challenges David's spiritual, I mean Solomon's spirituality. Maybe he kind of knew how mankind has a way. If he doesn't stay close to God, we can get into trouble. Somebody say amen. We need God. But then he comes to this part, and he knew he would build the temple because God told him, you can't build the temple, but your son Solomon will build the temple. Be strong, courageous, do the work. Don't be afraid or discouraged. For the Lord God, my God, is with you. Watch. God is with us. What do you hear? He will not fail you or forsake you until all the work of the service of the temple of the Lord is finished. In other words, what you start, I'm going to be with you and you're going to finish it. Come on, somebody. And look what the Lord has done. And this is just the beginning. Now I want to get a little practical for a few seconds and then we're going to Luke. Women. Have you guys gone into the women's restroom back there? If you haven't, I give you permission after I'm done preaching to go. Not right now. How many of you have been in our women's restroom? Your restroom. Isn't that beautiful? Now, men, how many of you have been in the women's restroom? No, I'm just kidding. No, what? Yeah, because we were working in there. Amen. Okay, but seriously. <laughs> Okay, don't worry, we're not weird, we're not. <laughs> okay, listen, how many of you have been in the men's restroom, men? Huh? This is phase one. Listen to what I'm going to tell you. That's a picture when one day when you walk in those doors back there and you look at the LED wall 
you look at the lighting, you look at the sound system, you look at everything, you're going to say, what are you going to say? What are you going to say? Because God has ordained it for us to be a model. I can't wait to see all the great things. And inside, it's not just the physical part. Some of you might be sitting there, yeah, 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 but what about the, people are going to get saved here, get delivered here. People are going to get launched out here. Some of you, God's going to set, break some chains and shackles in your life. I'm so excited. I am so, so excited. Listen to what this before we go to Luke. I want to read you this. I am the God. This is in Isaiah 46. I am the God and there is no other. I am God Almighty and there is none like me. I make known. Now listen carefully. Listen. To, listen. I've taught this before, but I want you to hear it. I make known the end from the beginning. From ancient times, I declare what is still to come. I have declared my purpose will stand, and, what, and I will do what I please. That's God's sovereignty. And then he says this, what I have said will come to pass. What I have planned cannot be stopped. Ha <laughs> ha! Say amen. amen. See, we've been predestined. We've been predestined by God. We were predestined to be here before you were born. God knew you would be sitting here today. And God knows your future. He says, I know the plans I have for you. He's got plans for us as individuals. He's got plans for our children, our grandchildren. He's got plans for this church. He's got plans for everything. God is a good God. All we got to do is stay in tune with God. All we got to do is stay right with God. Stay on fire. Stay in God's perfect will. Be right with God. And watch the great things God's going to do in your life. Great things. Great things. Not little things. Great things. God isn't waiting to figure out what's going to happen in a year from now or five years from now. The Bible says in Psalms 139, 16, all the days ordained for you were written in the book. He knew. The, God knows the, see, like with us, we start something. Right? Like Pastor Chris, we start something. We have pictures of the restrooms. When there was just a hole in the floor that they cut and and then Tommy came and started laying the pipes. They started working and laying the, the... Now you walk in, you see the finished product. See, God's the opposite. God starts from the end, wrote it all out, and then he allows you to be born. He's got the same thing for our lives and the same thing for this church. Come on, somebody. We're in God's perfect will. I'm so excited to see what God's doing. And I'm going to tell you something. God has ordained us and raised us up to be a model to the whole movement. Do you wonder? Not because of our titles, not because of our position, but because he's ordained us as a church for this time in the history of Victory Outreach International, for this time in the history of our life. God has raised up Woody Air to be a role model, to be an example, to lift our founders' arms and say, we got your back. We care about the world. We're building a mega church. We're not talking about it. We're already mega. We're going to continue to be. But we also have your heart, Pastor Sonny, Sister Julie. We're behind you. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Come on, Woody. Let's go. We have been ordained by God. We have been ordained by God. Luke chapter 17. And I'm going to get, after this, I'm going to close. Because we're going to celebrate. You know, I am grateful. And I am happy and I am excited. I'm just broken. During the worship, I couldn't stop crying. I'm just broken because of God's faithfulness. You know, when I got saved, and I was living with Pastor Willie, and he started the men's home in his house, and I was there during that season. 
We went to an event. Um, we drove all the way over to the ranch, and they were going to be preaching the series called The Vision, Pastor Cal, Pastor Sonny, and many years ago. And uh, I'm talking about the early 80s, like, it was probably 83, something like that. And um, we were there, it was powerful. And then when we went back to, we came, went back to Long Beach, we were in the bus, in the van, and, and the guys were saying, man, I'm going to be a pastor. I feel like God's calling me, I'm going to be an evangelist. I want to, I want to do this. And everybody was just all excited, talking, all the guys. And, and then I was just quiet, looking out the window. And then they said, hey, Joe, what about you? What do you think? What, what does God have for you? What do you want to do? I said, man, I just want to stay off of drugs and not go back to jail. I want to have a wife and about 50 kids and a couple of pet bulls and a white picket fence. And I, I just want to have a good life. Little did I know back then that God had called me. I didn't chase title. I didn't chase position. I didn't chase the calling. I chased God. And God has ordained us. And here we are today. Fast forward. We are making history. We are turning a supermarket. We have already turned a supermarket into the house of the living God. That is going to be a model and an example to the whole movement because of your faithfulness. And I want to publicly thank you for your faithfulness. Every single person here, thank you, thank you, thank you. God is going to bless your life. You watch God. The best is yet to come. We got to stay grateful. We got to stay grateful. If you have your Bibles open up, I'm going to take five minutes. Luke chapter 17. Luke chapter 17. Are you there? Good. Now, everybody look up here. What do you guys see? Somebody said it. Somebody said it. Pastor Brian said it first before you guys said it. I heard him. What do you guys see? I can't hear you. I see a beautiful LED wall. Do you see it yet? So if you could put your full LED wall. I'm going to show you a, a video clip before I go to Luke 17. Remember, this is our first service, so hold on. They're working on it. <laughs> see, and, and here's a miracle. I didn't even get mad. I didn't even threaten to throw my Bible. Not only that, it's too far back, my Bible wouldn't reach. Okay, I don't know if they got it ready. Do we have it ready? One, Juanito, everybody turn around, look at one, one, one. God wants me to one. tell you that he's okay, lifting okay. you up. Okay, go ahead, start the video. He is lifting you up. He's gonna lift you up from all the circumstances. He's gonna lift you up from all the things that the enemy throws at you and the enemy wants to throw at you and what God's doing is just lifting you up so you'll be able to walk right over those things you'll be able to walk right over the circumstances you'll be able to walk over all the trials you'll be able to declare that God has lifted your ministry up and God is going to bless your ministry God's going to anoint your ministry God's going to give you the finances that you need God is going to give you the man that you need. God's going to give you the women you need. God's going to move you from one place to another place. Though you like your place, God's going to move you from that place. And God is going to take you to a better place. And once God takes you to that better place, then he's going to move you again and take you to a better place. God's going to do that in the spirit and he's going to do that in the physical. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Woo! Today is prophecy fulfilled. Today, today, God in heaven has fulfilled the, the
divine prophecy that we got today in your front of your eyes you have seen prophecy fulfilled today today Woo! to God be the glory now listen give me two more minutes sit down because we got to leave like this here's how we're going to leave worship team get ready my singers get ready this is how we have to leave and this is how we have to stay please If I can open my heart and show you the inside of my heart, it's this scripture right here. I am one of these lepers, and so are you. The question is, which one are you? Now, on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. You know, I looked at that. Samaria was a despised place, a place of, that they were looked down. And Jesus came from Galilee. You know that of the 32 miracles or 33 miracles, 80% of the miracles that Jesus performed were in Galilee. 11 of the 12 apostles were, were from Galilee. And the significance to that is that God has specific time in history and some specific places where he chooses to manifest his glory and his anointing. And God has chosen to raise a Victor Outreach Woodier as a role model to this movement. I'm saying it in a proud way. I'm saying it in a humble, broken way. The responsibility, the weight that we have. Not all of you are going to get it but it'll come with time. And as he was going into the village, 10 men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and they called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity. I like this translation. It says, have pity. Not just mercy, but take pity on us. Look at us. And when he saw them, because God is always watching. Even when no one else is watching, he's watching you. When you're home alone, you're not home alone. When you're in that car and you think no one else is in that car, he's there, right there. And when he saw them, he said, go show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. As they went, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw, was healed. He came back, praising God in a loud voice, and he threw himself at Jesus' feet, and he thanked him, and notice the Holy Spirit calls him a Samaritan, a Gentile, an unworthy person, a treasure out of darkness, if you would. <laughs> and Jesus asked, were not all 10 cleansed? Where's the other nine? Was no one found to return and, and give praise to God except this foreigner? And then he said to him, arise and go. Your faith has made you well. I choose to be that grateful leper. And I hope our church catches that today. Have gratitude. Rejoice with us for the great things that God is doing. But let's don't get it twisted and let's don't forget. To God be the glory. To God be the glory for the great things that he's done and he's going to do. Let's stay faithful. Let's stay grateful. Let's stay broken. Let's stay humble. 
And let's continue to build and do God's perfect will. Let's all stand to our feet. Let's sing a worship song. Let's sing a song. Come on, I want you just to lift your hands for a moment. Let the Holy Spirit move. I trust in God, my Savior, the one who will never powerful message you and I just heard. I pray this is that is that your heart was challenged and your faith has been stirred to be who God has created you to be. You know, right there where you're at, you might be listening to in your car or in your kitchen or at your house, wherever you may be listening. If you're there and you feel a tugging in your heart, my friend, that's the Holy Spirit tugging at your heart. What we want to do is if you say you're right there and you say, you know what, I want to give God a chance. I want to lead you in a prayer. I want to lead you in a prayer that can begin to change your life forever. And that prayer is the prayer of salvation. If that's you today, I want you to repeat after me. Say, Jesus, forgive me of all my sins. Wash me in your blood. Cleanse me, God. Lord, I believe that you are the Son of God. You died on the cross and you rose from the, from the grave. Lord, I pray that you would make me anew starting today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. If you said that prayer, the Bible says this, that if one of you said that prayer, that the angels in heaven are rejoicing. And today, Victory Outreach Whittier, we rejoice with you. Once again, we want to thank you for tuning in to Victory Outreach Whittier, and we hope to hear from you soon. God bless you.